going to maybe find this fight. X50 is going to be put to sleep, but Jackie's going to be put to the ground. Double goes legendary. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Liquid will do it. Haters, be silenced. Expectations, be damned. One of the biggest moments in League of Legends history as Team Liquid take down the reigning world champs. A world record G2 Esports 3-0 will win MSI 2019. It's official. We're in a brand new era of League of Legends. Welcome everyone to Esports in 30. I'm Lisa Dwan and this is Matt Hempstead. And today we're breaking down that historic mid-season Invitational. Matt, in a nutshell, what went down at MSI? Well, you know, normally in international events you expect to see Korea and maybe China as of late dominate. But this is an entirely different situation where we actually have, you know, Europe versus North America in the finals. <laughs> and you look confused. Watching, I, I was confused. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with myself. Do I, do I, you know, do I still brush my teeth in the right. morning? Does everything change? It was, it was literally a bizarre world, but it's, it's good for the League of Legends scene as a whole to finally see these other regions catch up um, as bizarre as it was. But, you know, uh, it, it still had some really good League of Legends. The semifinals were incredibly hyped mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, really excited to see Europe actually come out on top. It's true. It is a brand new era. So let's get right into it. Before we call up our friend Hysterics, let's get to the highlights from the two absolutely insane semifinal matchups. <laughs> Team Liquid without their big engage mechanism is going to have a very difficult time defending it. Then here we go. Pop Blossom takes Ning down. It's IG on the run. A double kill over the impact. Falon's also going to fall as Xmithy will too. IG now in full retreat. The shot is going to be caught. There's your stun you're looking for. One Nexus turret is gone. The Invictus Gaming Juggler is gone. Double Lift is dominating. Double Lift's got a double kill. And Team Liquid strike first. Here we go for Xmithy. Trying to get in there. The Shockwave is going to stop the Realm Warp, but now Team Liquid have found themselves a ton of damage on the rookie. Ning's in some trouble. He's going to be taken down first. Poor still alive, but now he falls too. A Shockwave oh. to three. Good Lord, man. That's Jensen making the move. But Jackie strikes back. Impact wants to find a kill onto Ning. Oh, oh. 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 he's not able to find it. However, the Shockwave will find exactly what it's looking for. A shutdown over to Impact. Double F spells there. Shut down, Jackie Love! Team Liquid are on to Nexus. The Shy is stunned up. The Shy is brought down. And Team Liquid will take us to match point. Nick's not able to find the kill. Instead, it's Bellon now having to make the save. Everybody's coming in from both sides. A double kill over to Jensen. It's about to be three. Team Liquid's still going to be putting work into this one. Baron down to 2K. Core JJ on the front line, able to find the taunt. And Baron is secure. Oh. It's Invictus gaming in trouble. And Team Liquid on the attack. Shredded. Still looking to maybe find this fight. Hicks Smithy's going to be put to sleep, but Jackie's going to be put to the ground. Double goes legendary. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Liquid will do it. Haters, be silenced. Expectations, be damned. One of the biggest moments in League of Legends history as Team Liquid take down the reigning world champs. Nexus is coming in, the caps may already be gone. He goes golden thanks to the Outlaws. Khan's coming in with a slicing nose scoop into all of G2. Caps is already down. Perks follows. There goes Faker, chasing down the Perks. Perks stays alive for now. Khan by the next act. All of a sudden, though, it's a one for one. Support for AD. Yankos, as well as Caps, get themselves a reply back. Now Caps turns his attention to Khan. Faker's running low. He needs to get some regen. Whoa! He is popped by Caps. Caps is throwing out every single ability and turning his attention to Khan. It's a quad kill. Caps goes all the way to the steps of the fountain for a penta kill as G2 equalized the series at one to one. Five members of G2 trying to push forward, but the medium wave is getting obliterated. Oh, no! Massive manages to steal the knob. Faker turns around. He hijacks G2's chances. This is the G2 classic. They never go for conventional and trying to end the game. They're split pushing right now. Rise joins the top side. Here they go. All right, Abyssal Voyage will deliver Teddy to the back line. But Caps and Wanderer are on the Nexus. They will not go quietly. The Nexus is being focused, but look at Faker. Nexus, one or two more hits. Many more on the top. Wanderer forces game five. And Mickey gets a three-man taunt. Caps is waiting for the ultimate for that. 
can't. Throws down the Maelstrom and uses the Hourglass. That's a shutdown, I wonder. He can't do more, but it's a trade. Top laner for top laner. Another fantastic taunt from Mickey. Three more die in favor of G2. Baron has been interrupted. Teddy is trying to step forward. The taunt is going to come out. Caps is trying to find the kill. Mata's in trouble. Fake is low, but they've already got one into Mata. Where is Teddy? Follow his HP bar. Can't touch the wall. Teddy's dead. Yankos is in the pit. G2 Esports have been gifted and donated a Baron from SKT. That's a dunk from Wonder. Death from below for the double, for the ace. Champions can fall. Gods can bleed. Where were you when the rest rose up? to conquer champions. G2 Esports eliminates SK Telecom. North America face Europe at the MSI Finals. Yeah, you saw that right. Team Liquid toppled the favorites in Invictus Gaming, and G2 outlasted SK Telecom. To walk us through this crazy new world of League of Legends, we've got LPL caster Hysterics joining us. How's it going? Uh, thanks very much, guys. Uh, I'm going well. I was talking to you before the show about my uh, trip to Disneyland and, you know, like, that's the day gone by. I needed something to quell over what MSI just was, considering that we have new champions and considering that, as you just said, a team like Team Liquid just punched their way through to the grand finals making League of Legends history. That's right. As an LPL caster, that might have hurt really deep for you. Bit, uh, but let's uh, dive into the series with Team Liquid versus IG. So no one thought Liquid stood a chance, right, in the series. So how were they able to knock down the reigning world champions? So Invictus Gaming, first of all, I, I think there were a lot of expectations that they were going to perform a lot better in this series. And there were stellar moments out of the, uh, the you know, the reigning world champions. But you look at Team Liquid and you look at, <clears throat> excuse me, how, how they played in each and every single game against Invictus Gaming and you say wow like that that is the best Team Liquid has one played at MSI and two I think played at an international tournament ever like their their lane uh, strengths were there in double lift and core JJ their ability to adapt to the Invictus Gaming of the group stages because we all saw the group stages of MSI and IG were this powerhouse nine and one almost setting the record of ten and zero a flawless run through the group stage no one could read this team and then suddenly you get to all right TL's the obvious choice for IG and they come in so well prepared, so well read on Invictus Gaming's early bloody playstyle and how lane dominant they can be, that they were quite calm. They executed their plays in this manner to say that TL were... What was the best word for it? They weren't over-reading Invictus Gaming, which is, I think, what happened a lot in the group stage. And there were moments where you're like, okay, like the execution of these plays are great. They take what they need, they back away. Objectives, they're not over committing for it, but they're willing to stay and fight Invictus Gaming when IG have taken risky fights before and teams have backed away because they're not willing to commit. TL came into this like head first and IG, I think, were caught off guard. They, they, they were just playing some of their sloppy League of Legends, but not in a way that they could ever return from. Mm. Um, as an example, in, you know, in, in one of the games, like, I think it was game two where you had a 1-3-1 one, one composition out of IG and they just weren't executing those side lanes. They weren't playing towards their win condition. And there's all these tweets coming up about IG. It's like, play your damn side lanes. Like, what are you guys doing? Why are you not playing towards your composition? And TL knew that they weren't, you know, playing the style they should be in that game and just ran over them. They were clean. TL were clean yeah. and set new expectations that IG couldn't keep getting away with this messy style that they showed in group So stage. do you think there was an element of maybe IG underestimating TL? I mean, there's the memes, right? NA doesn't do well yeah. at international <laughs> events, so maybe they underestimated them a little? I think a little bit. That's a, a, that's a really good a really good question because um, f knowing how Invictus Gaming came through the spring split to, you know, the mid-season Invitational, there, there was a lot of, uh, I guess, underestimating in that same caliber towards some of the LPL teams. So domestically, they were still, you know, performing like, okay, you know, some of these weaker teams, as they called it, fun games mm -hmm. uh, towards weaker teams. Yeah, that underestimating factor definitely came into play. I think it does, it, but I, I don't want to take anything away from TL because of how clean and, and how good they were, even on the micro level of their executions to their team fights that they just outclassed the world champions. So in a way, yes, but that is, you know, not even close to the whole side of the story.
I mean, also the entire tournament, Team Liquid never really strayed away from their style. I mean, mm -hmm. it didn't always work in the group stage, <laughs> but I mean, in the finals, we saw in the final game, uh, you know, X Smithy brought out Skarner, Jensen played Lux. So how did TL get these picks to work against a team that was so flawless and actually beat them twice in, in the group stage as well? I remember that IG in, in times past would pick out some of these fancy picks in the jungle as well. And yeah. even in the bottom lane, um, in the LPL final against Jingdong in... Uh, you know, in the group stage as well, we saw Jackie loves Draven. So it's not like some of these picks were unknown or that the, the meta couldn't change in a way in this best of five, let alone the MSI that some of these picks could sh uh, show up. Um, for IG, like the, the way these picks worked is that uh, TL with their strategy and their drafting were being, uh, as I said before, they were adapting really, really well to Invictus Gaming. And when you run something like a Lux, you're going, all right, this is the all or nothing basket because Lux can, Lux can fall behind. Lux can have yeah. some abysmal fights when she's just not at that point. And um, in a team composition as well, like she facilitates many different roles. And I think when you say, all right, cool, TL are going to go for this, uh, I called it sublime draft afterwards. I was questioning going into it how you know like what are you going to expect like is this going to fall flat on its face and is this how ig bring themselves back in but uh there is just like there are just so many elements of tl that i didn't see coming that as i guess a chinese fan and, and as a chinese caster or rather lpl english caster that i thought okay this shouldn't catch ig off guard but it did in ways that i wouldn't imagine if, if that makes sense guys <laughs> Right, right. You know, as as hurtful it was to like the IG, LPL region and IG, this is a huge deal for like North America, yeah. right? Like they've struggled internationally for a long time, but now they've made the finals at MSI. So how much does this win showcase the progress that NA has made over the last couple of years? Uh, this this changes everything, and I think you'll agree <laughs> as well that this this changes everything. There is no way that now we go into worlds we go into any future tournament and have that same ideology that north america or even europe you know to that case are not at the level that they you know like i guess that they should be now so we have these higher expectations and we say that the rest of the world is catching up and that's a phrase that i'm starting to run through the back of my mind mm. and say yeah actually i, I think I, I don't know what you guys think but like for me um, North America was one of the, the one of the first leagues I watched, and I, I veered off it as I yeah. moved towards the LPL and everything. But uh, as I guess a, a North American fan, I wouldn't call myself that. And for you guys, it is just uplifting to say that okay, now we can do it, and we can actually we can actually head towards Worlds with our heads held high. You know, getting a finals position over what was the best team in the world. It's true. Yeah, but we've been through a lot. We have been through a lot. Been we been deserve this <laughs> moment. Um, just did. quickly for IG though, what what now for them? You know, like this was a hard loss for, this, yeah. for them, I'm sure. So where do they go from now, from here? Well, coming coming into summer, there's going to be new questions as to, you know, like what, what do IG do? Because you wouldn't expect any roster changes. We haven't heard anything. You know, we expect the same five players, you know, like Jackie Love, Bowland, Rookie, uh, Duke and the Shy, technically, and uh, uh, of course, like Ning in the Jungle. We expect to see them in summer and see kind of that development towards fixing what was uh, a semi-final that I don't think they should be proud of. I don't think IG played at their height and at the world champion status. They, as you put it, underestimated uh, TL, which, you know, I, I, st I still think is a part of it. But for IG, it's about, okay, just kind of bringing yourself back to that point, that stable point, saying, look, we are a world-caliber team and we deserved to be in the MSI finals, but we just didn't make it. Now we have to uplift and get to that point. Because remember that, you know, they changed coaching stuff at the start of the year. We lost the old coach, Kim. We're now to a new coach, Kim, Coach Karam. Uh, and, you know, you know, Martha's still on the back end and the organization has been very supportive. So there shouldn't be any trouble for IG to get back to that point. We expect to see them at Worlds. I definitely expect to see them there. I'd be surprised if they didn't make it. It's a, it's a new story of redemption for them to make sure that they can kind of bring the pride back to the Chinese region, but also show that they are the, the best group of talented members or the, be the best team from the LPL at the moment. Yeah, well, if things weren't crazy enough with, you know, the LPL getting yeah. knocked out in the semis, of course, G2 comes along and they also just <laughs> take out one. SKT in a, in a five-game series. But obviously, they had to really yeah. work for it because this was, this was not an easy series at all. So how did G2 outlast the legendary SK Telecom? I mean, this team just doesn't lose on an international stage. <laughs> 
It really, really doesn't. With G2 and SKT, I, I didn't expect the styles to clash that much. You know, when you have SKT, who uh, I believe it was Papa Smithy, and I'm not going to go quote for quote, but the essence of it was that like SKT, they take time to run into the competition. They they start out, you know, in the, in the group stages when we got there, it was more about, okay, SKT are going to get a read on the meta and, and, and the, the performance of teams, and we're going to move into it, we're going to move into the knockout stage, and SKT, you know, will be fully adapted, and they'll... And they did show that partially against G2, but then uh, it comes down to one game, and, and like, it, it gets to this point because these unique styles kind of clash in G2. I always saw as all right, if you want to put Invictus Gaming or an LPL team up against anyone else in the world, I'd say, look, look at G2. Look at look at how unique they can be with, you know, like like heavy, you know, you go for heavy clash early game, you go for a, a G2 style composition, which is what we saw in game number five, which is it tacky to say it caught SKT off guard? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think it caught a lot of us off guard. I, I, I think G2, their uh, innovativeness, is what makes them, you know, what made them a better team than SKT. And I would bring it down to that one game because it, you know, like game four and game three, I think showcased kind of the best of both worlds and how um, G2 can actually look to, to like to dominate in, in, in a less IG style. And I really, I shouldn't be comparing them as much, but uh, it, it was that game five for me that I'll just look back and say that was everything. Because G2, it's that innov innovativeness that we kind of saw yeah. out of TL, exactly. but in a very different way, right? So you go, cool, like, oh, we're running this comp again. All right, guys, <laughs> it's, it's the game five, it's, it's G2. And it was, may maybe that was the, the, the thought or the story about MSI that like innovativeness was mm. what brought you know the top level competition that's fascinating that's actually so interesting uh just one question about that game five specifically so perks uh went back on a mage in a in the bot lane uh he pulled out the mm. syndra to help g2 close out that series and before that yeah. there was a lot of skepticism uh when perks first moved to the bot lane yeah. right but obviously it worked out it paid off um how do you think this team has meshed so well though after this kind of uh, unprecedented uh, lane change uh, I, I think when you, you look at, like, the veterancy of someone like Perks, that is a really, really big part of it. And, and, you know, not speaking the inner workings of G2, but how Perks adapted from a mid lane position and then comes in and, you know, suddenly, like, the best AD carry in the world as a MSI, or, or rather, you know, the best AD carry in Europe. Uh, it is part of the veterancy. So there is a lot of credit for G2 for trying this out and that experimentation uh, being the keyword coming into it once again. But I think it is, it's a synergy that's built up between Perks and, and Mickey X and between the rest of G2 that has just made them such a good threat. And it, is it on the back of someone, you know, like, like Cap still being an absolute menace or mm -hmm. maybe the fact yeah. that Wonder um, was able to stand toe to toe with some of the best top laners in the world, proving that he is, you know, may be the best top player, the best Western top player in the world for sure, but he goes above and beyond that. So the synergy that was built with G2 was a classic example in that game, five, right? You see a Cinder in the bottom lane, you're like, <laughs> would this work with any other team? <clears throat> I wouldn't even give that to IG. <laughs> oh, like, would you? Uh, no, no, I would put my bets on that one. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, there's a big part of, of me that says that G2, like there's just there's so much confidence between them. The players are meshed yeah. so well. It's like one in a, a, almost one in a million or one in a thousand, let's be realistic. Yeah. And it's, it, you know, could on the back of perks, like that experience is showcasing that his professional history has come into this team. And even in a different role, it has changed the face of this European powerhouse that are now absolute kings of the world. So they definitely found a formula that worked for them. It's a, it's a weird one, but it works. It works. <laughs> uh, so there, there's one yeah. more series that we need to talk about. The first ever grand final between NA and EU. So let's check out the highlights for Team Liquid versus G2 Esports. <laughs> that brush right there, so if there is a play to be had, it could be a knockout on a double. You can see Karjay playing towards the back, the slow is there, the knockout, they're gonna find one, and they're burning down Karjay J. First blood for G2 in the final. Looks at the back line side, plenty of damage coming through, is Xfinity trying to run away, the turret's gonna drop, but no champions just yet. Caps, very low, but not dead either. Impact TPing in, and now on the back side, here comes Demon Flare! A big charm and a knockout on the back line, it's already one kill. Make it a second as the Team Liquid members are falling fast and furious. G2 Esports in commanding fashion will take 
game one. It's 3v3 now in this fight as the channel comes in. Look for the pull. G2 get kill number three. And number four, Doublelift is alone, and he will die. Looking for Cass. He does have the Akali ult under his wings. We can get really, really far. TP now comes into the squad. Look at this damage he gets towards Jensen. Nearly picks up the kill. The reinforcements are in. A stopwatch burn, and in goes Cannon trying to turn around. One for zero, make it one for one. Wonder is now dead. X50 trying to stay alive with the kills. Just come through fast and furious. They find almost the stun, and Yanko's gonna burn the stopwatch. This could be the team fight. In they go as he's still slicing Maelstrom. And it is just that slicing up Team Liquid. And suddenly it's one versus the world, and he cannot stop it. G2 looking at a sub 30 minute win. And they are a single game away from your first ever MSI trophy. Temper here being trying the QE. Nice juke by Cap, but will be hit a little bit. Nice little sun comes in. Oh, comes in as well. He's got a lot of a player to play around with. They find that first sun. They find some daily, but Ignite means he won't get the solo kill in the 1v2. And Cap tries it for Jensen. And here comes Mickey. Taking a lot of damage. The Herald will fall finally and fight that one that TL can win. Yankos drops, but Cap is under the turret. G2 unwilling to be stopped. The turret still in their eyes. Feathers fly. And G2 will pull back. That's a big stun. That's a big engage. Oh my gosh, look at the fight. They look for kill number four. This might be an ace inside of the base inside of 18 minutes. A world record. G2 Esports 3-0 will win MSI 2019. G2 didn't waste any time taking down Team Liquid to become the MSI champions. Hysterix, how on earth did G2 make this grand finals look so easy? Uh, it was <laughs> just like G2 in, in perfect form. And I know there's been a lot of conversation about form and like how G2 were coming into this. They looked in control. And uh, part of it was, you know, the specificities of, of TL. I know that. Uh, you, you guys were definitely talking about how TL looked in the grand final and versus, you know, maybe the semifinal against IG. And I'll hit on that super quick because, like, against IG, the best I've ever seen TL play. Against G2, it's not the worst, but it was nowhere near the quality that it should have been. And, and, and not to take anything away from G2, who, like, even bringing out the um, the pike top again, it doesn't matter what kind of matchup for yeah. Wonder in, in, I think it was game two, like, the... The versatility was there once again, but then you have to look at TL and say, "All right, cool. Like, what was the, like, what was the focus walking in on this series mm -hmm. when after IG you say, this is a this is a different style, but the similarities are still there." Right. Yeah, I wanted to ask about that specifically because G2 and Invictus both seem to be pretty aggressive, mm -hmm. especially in the early game, and TL had the read on Invictus, but not so much against G2. So, what makes G2's aggression so difficult in right. comparison to what IG brings to the table? You could say you could say that for IG, like at a point, TL. Uh, we talked about that predictability. It was, it was definitely still there for a team like Invictus Gaming. But you look at uh, the side lanes for G2, and you go, okay, cool. Like you're dealing with Wonder. We're dealing with mid lane. We're dealing with Caps. Uh, Jensen was still playing. Like Jensen played one of his best games against uh, IG. You look at like the top lane for TL, and you go. All right, cool. Like, what's, what does impact look like this as well? There are a couple of mistakes, like, here and there that um, TL, like, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get mm. there. We'll get there. <laughs> but for, for, like, for, for G2, the difference there is, like, okay, cool. The strength of sideliners is still really, really great. But then you look at that bottom lane. You look at, you know, like... What you know, like what what you know, what's happening happening down there, and mm -hmm. the counterability that Wonder brings in against someone like Impact, and how you go, all right, cool, we need to focus this lane, or we are gonna die trying. Because mm -hmm. if Wonder finds himself in a in pace of momentum, then it's just gonna keep on going. So the the difference was it was like definitely like the speed and and, and pace, and I, I guess I, again like it's still that versatility that we talk about that for a team like TL seem to be too much to handle yeah. and I, I can't put my finger on it the fact that like teal came into this one going all right cool maybe it is going to be the same but it was a very very different series a 3-0 in the final is just like a very strange feeling after what teal accomplished against ig yeah. Uh, let's uh, focus on that bot lane because obviously G2 had Perks and Mickey and then on TL, Doublelift and Core JJ. And I think, honestly, we have to call it out, like Core JJ made some 
like uncharacteristically big mistakes that yes. had huge impact. You know, everyone talked about that river. Like, what was he doing there in the first game? What was, yeah. he, was he lost? I don't know. I'm, sorry, I'm a little salty because <laughs> I had faith in NA. But so, looking at both sides, like G2 bottom lane obviously made plays to push their advantage. TL's bottom lane were unable to kind of match the same kind of pressure. So, like, from your perspective, how did they get that bot lane ahead and how did they snowball the rest of the map and secure three wins in less than, like, 30 minutes in each game? <laughs> Like like a lot of the time, you um, a fascinating stat is always looking at the jungle proximity and okay. and towards the bottom lane because like with jungle proximity, you're like okay cool, you know if it's focusing on the bottom lane, a lot of the time and especially in these two teams when you have you know like uh, like st stylistic uh, matchups, you're like okay the jungle is going to make his way down here and for just hitting on the point of of like core JJ's final because his final was. Uh, again, not reminiscent of what we saw against IAG. Uh, getting caught out like time lapses and looking at vision and, and how TL should be playing around this bottom lane just wasn't in sync. Mm -hmm. And for someone like, you know, like for Doublelift, who, who um, I, I think was like okay, uh, it was, you know, it, it was very saddening. So you look at how this game ran out of control and how, you know, the rest of the map could come down. Um, you'd look at things like jungle proximity, and I, I'd look at even like mid, mid to mid to bot is not even a stat. I've been told <laughs> off for that the LPL. They're like mid bot proximity is not a stat, but like look at how this map can rotate and revolve and be versatile. And you know, with the amount of TLs, like the, the amount of oh, <laughs> just the bottom lane of TL, right? It was it was, it was just such a big. It's just such a big hole when it shouldn't have been. It's Core JJ one of the strongest was strongest lanes, you know. Double Core if. JJ's event is a world class, is a world class support, and and Double Lift, you know, is, has been to so many international events. Double Lift has, has has proven that he is the, the best AD carry in America as well. Yeah. And then when Core JJ, something as simple as getting caught out, like clearing vision, like I'm not even sure what. I need to go back and like slow that down because <laughs> I'm not sure what's actually happening. Yeah. But. For someone like Core JJ, something that small, and then it, it, it's a it's a ripple effect, right? And then it just pulls one thing another, and then G2 can exploit that. Like, okay, mm -hmm. caught out again and again and again, and like unable to secure vision, and it continues on to be this point where like TL uh, are struggling through the bottom lane because of this one error that that hurts them. So. G2 can rinse and repeat and abuse and abuse. Well, so here's, here's the thing, though. It's a good thing, in a sense, that this happened now for TL because that means they can work on this moving forward yeah. and hopefully at Worlds where, you know, that's the biggest tournament of the year so that they can fix this. I mean, we've, and, seen, we've seen the highs of Team Liquid against yeah. Invictus, and we've also seen that they're pretty inconsistent against, you know, span of two days. G2. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this result obviously hurts. What do they need to work on, though, going forward? Is it literally just expanding their play style because at times we saw it was a little bit one note, or is it just consistency? Yeah. Because we know, you know, guys like Double Lift don't always always just live up to the expectations on that, that final mm. stage. Hard to ask for consistency because mm. consistency is always like, you know, it comes down to coaching staff, to management, like how the player is feeling on the day. I would look at someone like X Smithy who, um, again, broken record against IG, much better performance. But for someone like X Smithy, when we talk about inconsistency, through the group stage, X Smithy had some abysmal performances. Like it was, you know, subpar. The rest of TL looked okay. And then if someone like X Smith, he's not performing well, uh, again, use the word ripple effect, mm -hmm. it, it goes on. Jensen was, you know, back and forth, but ultimately having better performances could go even further if X Smithy was playing his element. So if in order what they need to work on needs to be like the way X Smithy, like his pathing, first of all, if you look at his jungle pathing in some of his games, sometimes you even look at it and go, is that like, that looks like an inefficient route. Oh. Like, how did you get there? Mm. Where are you going? And, and so many question marks around X Smithy, where if he was playing the the level of jungle game like Ning in group stage with someone like uh, Clid, like Clid had you know a great perform, like his group stage was magnificent as well. If he was playing that level of, of like jungling, we'd see such a different game out of tier, like out of TL, and, and the way he can influence. So going forward, I, I would say. Smithy for sure. Core JJ is, 
a question mark but not really yeah. um i would just look purely at the jungling and how it influences the rest of the map because in this meta where we're constantly playing around so many different picks there in the jungle where junglers like ning junglers like clid could come out they can pick like their el classico lee sin but then they can shift and especially ning can shift around to something you know even i haven't seen him on the heck room i'm sure he can play it mm -hmm. that x smithy was showing so much in group stage we can see we see things like kane from someone like ning and he has has that wide champion pool that you always say wow that's amazing you yeah. go to someone like x smithy we see a lot of the hecarim we see a lot of the sejuani mm. and we're like that's you know that's great but how is the performance going to be on that so like versatility and, and champ pool is a good start but the consistency like you mentioned uh, i think is going to be x smithy's downfall mm. if we do not see the i guess knockout stage x smithy all the time Right. right. All right. So TL have a couple things to work on, and for G2 they can ride this wave yeah. as the right Good now chance. the best good. international oh, yeah. team. Um, Hysterics, unfortunately, we're out of time. But thank you so much for joining us to talk about MSI. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, looking forward to the summer split starting, and looking forward <laughs> to Worlds. <laughs> I like how he's so excited about the summer split. So excited. Uh, but before we move on, of course, yes. MSI is over, which means we have to declare a player of the tournament. Matt, who do you got? Well, Caps won MVP for the finals, and obviously, you know, there's a lot of guys you can give credit to on G2. Wonder was dominant in the top lane for a lot of the tournament. Caps was showing off with 1v2s and his outplay me mechanisms, but I think you got to give a lot of credit to Mickey X because oh. this was a guy who had a lot of question marks coming into the tournament. You know, how much has he practiced with his wrist injury? Is he going to be okay? How much time has he played with perks? Um, and the answer to that is not much. Apparently, Perks was playing a lot with Promise Q and scrims and getting ready for the tournament. So Mickey X comes in with, you know, not that much preparation, not that much playing time, and it doesn't look like it at all, right? You've seen some of his engages on Rakan, and I think especially in that grand finals against Team Liquid, he was just picture perfect with where to be, his engages roaming mid to make sure Caps could pull up those 1v2s. So I think a lot of the credit goes towards him and not having to play with, with too much time. Mm. It just looked like he didn't miss a beat right, whatsoever. Flawless. So I think Mickey <laughs> X is kind of one of those guys who's, who's lost a little bit underneath Caps and Wonder, but All he right. should get the credit. All right, there you have it. Mickey is our MVP. That's and right. we now live in a world where G2 is the best team in the world. <laughs> Big congrats to them. Now on the show tomorrow, we've got Brody and Drewface chatting about Super Smash Bros. from Gommel. Until then, check us out on all our socials at Squad State, and we'll see you tomorrow.